2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Okay. So tell me the difference between two scenarios which I'm going to write. Okay. So I need differences. Between these two. You have a team of 60 members and you are unable to manage it and now I'm going to Okay. Going to hire another manager to help you. Okay, this is one case. And the second case is you have a team of sixty members and you are able to manage this team able to manage the team and now hired another manager so that he can uh, work in case you are on leave okay so the first case is I have a team of 60 members and my manager is not able to handle all these 60 members and the second case is I have a team of 60 members and my manager is able to manage all the 60 members but whenever he is on a leave or something he needs a backup of another manager such that he can take care of him. So what's the difference between these two? Come on guys it's a straightforward question what's the difference between these two? Hello? Hello, are you able to hear me? Hello? Okay, 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 fine. So, okay, if you are not answering, I will think like <laughs> you are not able to hear me. Okay, so I need answers. So what's the difference? First case is you are not able to handle. Uh, no, I'm asking the difference between the two uh, cases that I had given. That's it. I mean just the meaning of the two differences. That's it. right the first case is I'm not able to handle my work and I'm trying to get someone to help me and the second case is 
<laughs> nice good joke <laughs> right rahul is saying first case managers will not be able to go on vacation true so the right you are correct here manager is mandatory and of course okay to stay he cannot go for vacation exactly i will use this also in my explanation i am able to manage it but i need a backup manager right so the second one is like much more like a backup context and the first one is not able to handle context a failure context right that's what federation high high level high level availability is about federation to help you out and high availability is is giving a backup name node guys don't confuse this is not a secondary name node it is a backup of name node itself so we are going to have one more name node that's what the difference is it's not a secondary name node okay federation so let's start talking about this in hadoop 1.0 the problem is as per the analysis analysis or statistics that was done on it the maximum number of slaves that a name node can manage is 4040 nodes that's it but when it come to hadoop 0. Point, sorry hadoop 2.0 that's what the difference is in 2.0 my name node is more powerful that it can manage till 10000 nodes in the sense my name node capacity is such a big one such that it is able to handle the metadata of 10000 machines so federation is nothing but adding one more name node so let me draw a diagram for you here i'm going to have two name nodes as i told you and let's imagine that this is my data node this is my data node and this is my data node name node data node data node okay so what happens here is each name node will talk with all the data nodes this guy will talk to all the three data nodes and this guy will talk to all the three data nodes so both the guys will contain the metadata of all the data nodes so maybe here i would give the name for my first name node as some sales or something like that okay not particularly this so if at all i want to browse any file on this guy it has to start with sales and this guy would be given another name as marketing for example so whatever the file i want to access on this guy it would be start with marketing 
So these two name nodes, each name node will have a entire list of data nodes to store the data. So with multiple name nodes you can get to handle ten thousand nodes. That's it. So are you clear with this? So it's just nothing but bringing in a new manager to help manage your team. That's it. You may think that uh, doesn't this going to impact the performance of uh, the data nodes because multiple name nodes are going to assign work for the same data nodes. So for example if you take the data node 1, uh, this data node 1 may get uh, orders from both. How this works if both name nodes are talking? That's what I'm going to explain you Rahul. Okay, uh, you may think like multiple uh, sorry yeah okay multiple name nodes are going to input uh, give inputs to your single data node so suppose this data node okay let it be give like this this data node 1 is going to get orders from sales uh, sales name node and marketing data node so the logic behind this is data nodes are just the storage servers and it is used only to store the data it doesn't mind from where it is going to data it is just a blind uh, it is just a blind machine which is used to store the data and whenever any task tracker from any data node comes and asks you for that data it will just give you that data it doesn't I mean uh, all the tasks that were going to run on your data nodes are isolated in the sense it don't know what happening outside the world that's it and that is the reason and while processing the job tracker or task tracker lookups for the required data for processing and it's kind of uh, I mean it's kind of none uh, not bothering thing or maybe immaterial thing what other data node is going to store or how the other data nodes are going to access this it is just there is one more master for this guy where he is going to get the data that's it one more source or maybe if you take it like files it is like uh, this data node is getting data from two input files rather than one input file that's it and submitting the jobs for both sales and marketing is just like my job tracker is receiving two programs simultaneously that's it it might be from any name node it doesn't matter it is like just how many programs that were running simultaneously right submitting jobs for both sales and marketing is just like my job tracker is getting two programs at the same time that's it the the number of slaves and number of slots remain the same that's it so for example uh, I have eight processor machines and then uh, how many tasks that I can perform if this is the case if you do you any one of you remember it we it is there in our cluster uh, maintenance 
PPT. We had discussed like how the machines should uh, look like, what should be the best practices for having a machine, how many tasks uh, that are going to run on a machine, right? So, how many tasks we can run parallelly? Okay, let me tell you. It's just 8 into 1.5 tasks equal to something. Eight into one point five. Okay, it is twelve. So it is just twelve tasks that it can run. Parallelly. Right? So twelve tasks may be running on a ten thousand node cluster means it has totally one lakh 20,000 slots available to take the jobs. It is like an overall number of slots that were going to be available. That's it. It's not like how many name nodes are going to submit it or how many how it's going to be stored. So totally I have 1,20,000 slots sir. That is what my data node says okay job tracker will say fine uh, uh, so if any job comes to either name node it's like fixed 1,20,000 slots and it's not going to affect the performance or computation capacity of my cluster the job tracker will say okay uh, machine 1, 2, 3 and 4 run on your slots you don't mind that from which data node or I mean from which na name node you are going to get commission just go and get the data and run it that's it fine all good So shall I move to the next one? High availability. Shall I move? Okay, good. So high availability is nothing like but I am having a backup manager, right? Okay. So these are my data nodes. Four. Okay. So these are my data nodes, and here my name nodes will be like one is active name node and another one is passive name node so only one guy is going to act at a single point of time okay so here also each data node is capable of talking with both my name nodes it has access to talk with both the data nodes and definitely it's going to talk with both the data nodes also but the only point is these both data nodes write their metadata at a single shared point location and that location is called as
or less journal so this is an area or maybe shared location you can think of where my both active name nodes and passive name nodes are going to store the data okay at one single point of time active node active name node will write the data and passive name node just reads whatever the active name node data is writing and whenever the active name node at a single point of time you are not able to hear my voice uh, is it the same with everyone guys are you able to hear my voice hello uh, guys are you not able to hear my voice yeah of course i will repeat it but i mean uh, i just wanted to confirm look whether you are not able to hear me hello it's clear now okay so okay so uh you uh, you want to repeat me the high availability nisha is that what you are requesting okay so high availability is nothing but more availability the name itself will say you that uh the name node whenever it goes down some other name node will come up to hold your cluster if name node goes down actually what should happen is your cluster should go down right but that's not the case with high availability it was introduced from hadoop 2.0 version and what it says is whenever you are managing capacity of one of your name node goes down another name node is going to come up which will act or which will save your cluster so suppose i am having four data nodes on my cluster and for each of the cluster there will be two name nodes one is active name node and another one is passive name nodes it's not like both machines are going to work simultaneously whenever if a machine if one single machine goes down the second machine will come into picture so as of now just imagine that it is as usual like my regular hdfs cluster and my active name node is talking with me all the data nodes and it is storing all the data at one moment if my name node goes down this passive name node will start working so definitely whenever a name node is storing some information it has to store the metadata right so somewhere on its ram or maybe somewhere at any other location so rather than storing it independently here what it does is both my active name node and passive name nodes will maintain a shared location called as journal so at this location both all the metadata of both the name nodes will be stored and if at all at any point of time my active name node goes down my passive name node will writes all the data to this metadata information that is general and my active name node just updates this data that's it the writing functionality is taken care by my passive name node and just my active name node will update its metadata information right and vice versa whenever my passive name node goes down so this mm, this moment mm, or else this failover moment from 
active to passive can be automatic or manual so the admin guy is there for us to handle this functionality so he can set up it to have this passive name node come up into picture automatically or maybe he can set it up manually also this passive name node will come into picture remember that only when active name node goes down that's it so there is another ecosystem you can call it as ecosystem as well there is a zookeeper the functionality of zookeeper is just coordination when we have secondary name node why do we have passive name node see uh, secondary name node is like uh, whenever the name node metadata goes down it's not the case with name node metadata or name node capacity goes down only if name node goes down secondary name node will come up but if name node capacity goes down passive name node will come into picture not hear me why what happened guys it's not the uh, is it the case with everyone it seems that my connection is very good oh, come on man okay 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 no issues here it is storing the metadata i mean the sharing of metadata happens but that's not the case with my name node and secondary name node right the secondary name node will keep the backup of my name node that's it and whenever my name node goes down uh, automatically my secondary name node will not come into picture stating that i am going to act as a name node right my admin has to set up a new machine and he has to copy all the metadata that was stored into my secondary name node into that new machine and start up the cluster but here that's not the case the zookeeper component here ensures that that if a name node fails the fail name node is not allowed to write data to the metadata storage to the shared meta data storage so that's what it talks about so to make you much more clearer i'm going to ask you one question uh and maybe you can think it as an certification question as well okay we have a three node federated cluster and each name node is highly available also so it has both the features it has a federated cluster and it is high availability as well what is the total number of master nodes present in my cluster so 
so this is the question so anyone can think about it so it is three nodes federated and each is highly available also right perfect it is six answer so team is very huge and there are team managers three managers and each manager has a backup manager as well that's what the federation and high high availability talks about good rahul so okay Okay, so that's what high availability talks about. So coming to the last topic of today's session, it is yarn, which is nothing but at another resource manager. So so many new topics for today, right? Uh, it's not going to dump i'm not going to dump you right you are fine to take some more information or do you want me to stop it for today shall i go ahead with this topic for today cool in hadoop 1.0 there is a tight relationship between <coughs> excuse me hdfs and map reduce right so we are saying that uh, if i say that i had installed hadoop on my cluster that means both hdfs and map reduce is going to be installed on my cluster right so there is a tight coupling of tight coupling or maybe some good relationship between hdfs and map reduce so it's like whenever hdfs is available it is mandatory that map reduce should also be there or whenever or wherever the map reduce is available there should be some database to process it right so there is some good relationship between these both two guys or maybe even you write programs in pick and hive also internally it has to convert these programs to map reduce such that my cluster is able to understand their language so cluster is a guy who can understand only map reduce there is nothing in this mind rather than map reduce that's what my framework situation is like my framework is not able to understand any other new things he is a dumb guy and he is not able to understand new languages so that's the reason we will convert by pig and hive also internally to map reduce and this cluster is able to understand okay there should i should get a jar file consists of driver mapper and reducer that's it or else i am not able to understand your program that's it okay but that's not the case with hadoop 2.0 he is some more intelligent guy <laughs> okay here previously mr was the only framework allowed but now map reduce is just one of the framework that's it we can have 
many other frameworks. as well introduced to my cluster so that's what the advantage of the new ARM system okay the new framework the new framework can be of any other uh, kind of frameworks which is a distributed framework which can utilize my Hadoop so let's Go and talk about this. I have a distributed file system which is very big one right and on top of it a processing system is sitting here. MapReduce. So if you remember our ecosystem diagram, this is how it was given, right? Uh, at the bottom layer, you will have HDFS and on top of it, you will have MapReduce, Hive, Pig and so on, right? But here, in my YAM system, along with the MapReduce framework, there will be other frameworks as well. So this is another framework called as massive parallel processing which is called as MPP so it is used this framework is used for huge processing which is going to use my HDFS only and this sits on my cluster itself so if at all I want to use the MapReduce framework to process for processing I can have the combination of MR and HDFS no I don't want to write a MapReduce program I will write something in some other model then MPP is another model where I can write my program and the coupling happens between MPP and HDFS and in the same way again I have one more framework called as Apache Giraffe okay this is again another framework which is used for graph processing which is used for graph processing. So in Hadoop 1.0, Hadoop equal to HDFS plus MapReduce. Okay, I will write it. In 1.0, Hadoop means HDFS plus MapReduce. In 2.0, Hadoop is HDFS plus any distributed processing framework including my MapReduce so in 1.0 MapReduce is the only framework that I can use and in 2.0 MapReduce is one of the framework that I can use that's what the different happens difference happens in YAM okay shall I go ahead So, if you talk about 1.0, the situation will be like, there is one intelligent guy, or as my job tracker, 
and this guy is going to talk with all my task trackers right he can talk with my first task tracker second task tracker and third task tracker so job tracker is much more like a technical manager who knows about map reduce in and out of my whole logic and would accept assignments on only map reduce functionalities right he's a very intelligent guy of course he knows how to give the task to each of the task trackers how to distribute and how to share the jobs between all these task trackers etc etc but the only disadvantage with this guy is he can do the processing only with map reduce that's it but when i come to 2.0 here okay here the diagram will look a bit different way instead of chart tracker here i am having a guy called as resource manager okay the same functionality happens here also resource manager talks with node manager node manager and node manager but here the job tracker plus so it's like as soon as a new program is submitted the resource manager looks at the kind of program and so let's say the submitted program was map reduce the resource manager will say that okay the submitted program was a map reduce program and it is going to be done by map reduce framework or else if that's not the case if the resource manager is going to get some other program the resource the resource manager or maybe some mpp program the resource manager will just initialize the mr app master which is just like one technical lead uh, which is going to act like a job tracker who will understand their kind of programs it's not map reduce right it will understand some other uh, kind of program so resource manager is like a kind of daemon he will say that okay come on guys i got a new assignment on map reduce and sorry i got a new assignment on i got a new assignment on mpp so give me some 40 slots and i will complete the job he says that okay it's mpp program i am going to give you these slots run it and finish it and again after some time he will submit another program that is a program written or can be understood by apache giraffe so he will say that okay give me some 60 slots such that i can process this apache giraffe program so that's how it happens so this resource manager is the guy who can understand all kinds of programs or all kinds of frameworks so it's nothing but instead of a technical manager like a job tracker a resource manager will come such that it can share between different frameworks so any questions on this this is what my yan talks about
so fine with everyone i hope that i didn't uh, go faster today as this were simple topics i tried to cover some good amount of theory today so all good guys can we meet in our next class for our next topics so hopefully uh, in our next class i will talk about schedulers first so one that is one of the big topic and after that i think there are very small topics and with that we can wind up the map reduce and start talking about pig uh yes it will be your monday night so it's yes your monday night okay thank you all for joining let's meet in our next class and happy weekend Okay H2K Emphasis provides world class online IT training staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide H2K Emphasis how we are different from our competitors 100% job oriented training hands on project work cloud test lab resume preparation and review mock interviews robust syllabus one time fee and lifetime access to classes access to recorded sessions of live classes h2k emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide for a free demo class visit us at h2kemphasis.com